You know, the Saints got some big decisions to make in the offseason. I mean, they got to worry who they're going to bring back and who they're going to let go. I mean, there's quite a few free agents on this list that I'm looking at right now. Quite a few. A lot of names that, you know, are, are core players and mean a lot to the Saints organization. You got Drew Brees. Drew Brees, an unrestricted free agent. Teddy Bridgewater, unrestricted free agent. A.J. Klein, Ted Ginn Jr., Von Bell. I mean, these are some these are some major names on the Saints team. And they got to figure out what they're going to do. And people are asking, you know, are they going to bring back Drew Brees? Is Drew Brees going to retire? Are they going to move on? And if they move on, who's going to be a successor to Drew Brees? Is it going to be Taysom Hill or Teddy Bridgewater? It's a tough decision to make. And my grandmother, she read me the riot act. <laughs> She definitely did. She called me on the phone, and, and and she's a huge New Orleans Saints fan. And she didn't like the comments that I made about Drew Brees and possibly, you know, getting rid of Drew Brees. She didn't like that because my grandmother has been a Saints fan since their existence. She go way back, you know, the 1967 season, she has been a Saints fan. And, um, you know, she appreciates what Drew Brees has done. And I ha I do, too. You know, like, I think people get that misconstrued. I, I really appreciate what Drew Brees has done for the city of New Orleans, the, the Gulf Coast region, the state of Louisiana. Look, I completely understand that. I know how it made me feel when the Saints won the Super Bowl. I never thought that I would ever see that in my lifetime. He legitimized the New Orleans Saints organization. But look, this this is not a, a lifetime achievement war being a starting quarterback. Okay? You can you can really hold your team back trying to hold on to the days of yesteryear. And some of y'all probably okay with that. Y'all probably okay with that. Y'all want to go down with the ship. Y'all like the, the you know the violin players on the Titanic. It, it was such a pleasure to play with you guys this evening. Y'all just gonna play the violin, the Drew Brees violin, until the Titanic sinks. But me personally, I, I look towards the future. And not that I'm looking past what Drew Brees has done. It will, it, 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 he can never be duplicated. Number nine should never be worn ever by another Saints player. But when I'm looking at this list and I'm looking at people like Teddy Bridgewater, who's an unrestricted free agent, Taysom Hill, who's a restricted free agent, and, and I listen to Sean Payton's comments about Taysom Hill. I mean, Sean Payton really seems as if he wants to move on with Taysom Hill. You know, a question was asked by someone in the media about Taysom Hill being a restricted free agent. And Sean Payton, he said, well, you know, teams are probably going to want to do something with him because of the success of Lamar Jackson. They can see him possibly doing some things similar to what Lamar Jackson can do. But what did he say after that? He said, well, he's still a restricted free agent and, you know, we can match the offer. So what does that tell you right there? He don't want to get rid of him. So go out here and try to give him some money. We're going to try to match it. And then he was asked about Drew Brees. And for the first time I can think of in years, Sean Payton was like, well, you know, we're going to sit. We didn't now nah, he didn't even say we we're going to sit down. He just said, we're going to evaluate each player. That's exactly what he said. We're going to evaluate each player. Usually when they talk about Drew Brees and his status, he will say like, yeah, he's coming back or yeah, you know, he's not done yet or we're going to work it out contractually. He didn't say that this time. So I'm telling you, the Saints are really thinking about this. They're really thinking about possibly moving on from Drew Brees. Now, somebody asked me, do I think they're going to do it? I probably would say no. Do I think they should? Yes, they should. They should if Drew Brees tries to get max money. I feel like Drew Brees has made enough money that he can take a pay cut. You, somebody needs to sit down with Drew and say, hey, look, listen. You know, Drew, I understand, you know, we've we been paying you, been, been making sure that you – you know, get as much money as you possibly can. But if you want to, you know, continue with the organization and you want us to go forward, we, we would like for you to take a pay cut. Now, if Drew Brees goes and, and takes a pay cut, then cool. Then you can bring back Taysom Hill, 
Taysom Hill can be his backup, and you can mold and shape Taysom Hill if you want to get rid of Teddy Bridgewater. Or, or let Teddy Bridgewater go out here, test the free agent market, which I'm pretty sure he's going to get, get a starting job somewhere, probably Los Angeles or Tampa. So if you want to do that, that's fine. But if Drew Brees up there talking about he want to get paid $30 million, then you need to send Drew Brees up on his way. Okay? Maybe he can, you know, get reunited with the Chargers again. They're trying to open up a brand new stadium. And know who that nation, I'm not trying to be cutthroat. But it just, if you are so busy and focused on just trying to make money and you done made hand over fist with it, and, you know, you're not even looking at the fact that, okay, we got to pay this guy and that guy, and you're not looking out for the organization, you know, then you got to make those tough decisions. Because your money can actually handicap the future of the franchise. And you'll be long gone, retired, and well-respected, and a first ballot Hall of Famer, and the Saints will be struggling. So sometimes it's just not about, oh, you know what I'm saying, we, we got to be loyal to Drew Brees or we got to be dedicated to Drew Brees. And, you know, sometimes it's not about that. It's about making the right decision for the organization. You know, that, that's the most important thing. So looking at this list, I mean, I, I can tell you some people they definitely don't need to bring back right off the bat. Eli Apple. Eli Apple needs to go. The Saints didn't pick up his fifth year option because I think they would have owed him like about six or, you know, about six million dollars, probably a little bit more than that. Don't quote me on that. But he definitely not worth that money. Look, I'm not on that bandwagon of people that was out there chin because the man got hurt. I hope he has a successful career wherever he goes. I mean, he's young. I mean, he's, well, he's like 24, 25 years old, so he got a lot of football left. But I just think that Eli Apple is just a guy who suffers with confidence. Like, he, he battles with uh, his self-confidence. It, I think he battles with self-esteem. I feel like his mom is one of those people that get too involved with his life. And I just think that she be trying to live off his spotlight. I mean, I look at her on Twitter and stuff like that, man. She always making tweets to get attention about her looks and everything like that. You know, it just seemed like to me like she just used her son's light to illuminate him herself. And, and I feel like he suffers from that. Because everything that I've seen tells me that he's a mama's boy. And when he goes through adversity, he shrinks. So I definitely wouldn't want to bring him back. I don't want that type of culture in the New Orleans Saints organization anymore. Then I look at someone else, P.J. Williams. And in my opinion, should have been long gone. I don't understand why the Saints brought him back. Like, what has P.J. Williams done in the Saints uniform for him to get another contract? Absolutely nothing. He has done nothing but get roasted and toasted up and down the field, been a whipping boy. This man almost allowed Calvin Ridley to become Offensive Rookie of the Year in one game on him. P.J. Williams, the only thing that you can say positive about him is that he can tackle. But he couldn't cover if you gave him a bed sheet. I'm just telling you like it is. This guy has very little cover skills. He has no recovery speed. He's a larger cornerback, and you can get him to bully the slots, you know, the slot receivers. But at the end of the day, when it all comes down to it, you can't put him on the outside. And he's a, a defensive liability. And I just don't understand why the Saints decided to bring him back. It had to be for chemistry reasons because I, I just didn't see nothing out of P.J. Williams as long as he's been in the Saints uniform to tell me that he can continue or he deserves to be playing for the Saints this past season. He should have been gone before. That's just my opinion. Ted Ginn Jr. Nope. Sorry. Ted Ginn Jr. still has that speed. Ted Ginn Jr. still has elite NFL speed. But he couldn't catch a cold and 40 below zero. This man couldn't catch a case if he actually committed the crime. So I think he needs to go. Now, Ted Ginn Jr. has been really good for the New Orleans Saints. But when you combine Drew Brees' lack of arm strength and... Ted Ginn Jr., very limited route running skills. 
I don't think that this is a good fit for the New Orleans Saints. And honestly, what Deontay Harris did in the playoffs shows you that the Saints may want to go in a different direction because they probably are going to try to mold and shape Deontay Harris into being in that Ted Ginn role. So I, I respect Ted again, you know, for what he did with the New Orleans Saints, but I got to call it for what it is. I would not bring him back. You look at some of these other names. A.J. Klein. A.J. Klein I would bring back. He'll be 29 years old at the beginning of next season. And A.J. Klein has really shown this past season that he can be a, a really good linebacker, which he is. Uh, you know, the Saints really uh, need him on this team for his leadership uh, you know, his his ability to know where he needs to be on the field. And I think the chemistry between him and Demario Davis is really good. They don't really make many mistakes. And it, you got to like the intensity that they play with. I remember the game A.J. Klein went in week 17. I promise you, I, I didn't know if Luke Keekley switched sides because he was all over the field. So I would definitely bring A.J. Klein back. The rest of this stuff, you know, Von Bell, I like Von Bell a lot, but I wouldn't bring him back. It's not the most popular decision, but I think the fact that he got injured and the Who That Nation and the Saints organization actually saw C.J. Garner Johnson and and how he was just all over the field and and how this guy just just really aggressive and he's a short tackler and he's a you know he's a ball hawk. He has good instincts, good skills. He's a, you know, he, he's a guy that actually just is really passionate about the game. I think we saw that after the Saints lost him sitting on the, the turf and with tears in his eyes because the season was over. I think the Saints got a win in C.J. Garner Johnson. Now, what you need to do is you want to get rid of Von Bell and you want to keep C.J. Garner Johnson, of course, and you probably want to draft a safety that can match this, the same type of intensity as a C.J. Garner Johnson. And you want to mold him. Now, I don't know what Saquon Hampton have. The rookie that came out of Rutgers, he got hurt. He got put on IR. He was playing mostly on special teams. He has a lot of upside. Of course, he's going to be back th next year. So we'll find out what, what it is about him. But Von Bell, he did a good job this season. He got some turnovers. Um, I liked him in, in, in some of the blitz packages. But... Depending on how much he's asking for, I wouldn't just be jumping out the window to try to bring him back. David Amyamata, that's somebody that I would bring back. I like David Amyamata. I think him in a run game, I mean, he was a run stuffer. He plays with a lot of aggression, and I think he gets better year after year. I mean, he started the beginning of the season and, you know, until Sheldon Rankins came back and he was a steady. I think it's, he is one of the reasons why the Saints didn't allow 100-yard rusher in, in two years. So I definitely would bring him back. But I'm pretty sure that he's probably going to try to test the free, mar the free agent market because somebody is going to try to pick this guy up, and I don't blame him. So hopefully the Saints can try to sign him, you know, to get him uh, to stay with the New Orleans Saints, but I'm pretty sure his phone is going to be ringing off the hook. Dwayne Washington. I would love to keep Dwayne Washington, but – you know, to for the sake of this young man's career, I, I will want him to go somewhere else because the Saints are not going to use him. It's obvious the dude got talent. It's obvious he can run. Usually towards the end of the games, the Saints allow him to come in the game and he goes out there and he does a good job. I don't know why the Saints don't use him in a rotation. I guess he's not one of Sean Payton's guys. And we all know that it's the Alvin Kamara show and everybody else is just, you know, on the sidelines and just, you know, background music. So I would like to see Dwayne Washington go somewhere else where he can spread his wings and and we probably can be on him watching him on television and, and be like, man, you know, why did we get rid of Dwayne Washington? Just like we say, why did we get rid of Mark Ingram? Or we say, why we got rid of Jimmy Graham? You know, like we say stuff like that, you know? Or we say like, why we got rid of Malcolm Jenkins? Why we got rid of Darren Sproles? The list goes on and on. But the rest of these guys, man, you know, Austin Carr, Keyshawn Hogan, like, nah, 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 goodbye. Don't need them. Basically, we're just collecting checks 
wasting space and time. The Saints just need to stop wasting all these wide receivers that are not going to benefit to the team. They need to get guys who are hungry, the guys that can get off the line of scrimmage, guys that can get separation. They need a number two receiver. That's pretty obvious, but they need some other guys too to make plays. And I feel like that's something that has been missing for a while in the Saints organization. You got Jared Cook. You got yourself an elite tight end, but you need some wide receivers. That's what you need. You need some wide receivers that can get separation. You need some dogs out there. Because right now you just got some puppies. You know, like just some some little some little mangy puppies out there. No disrespect intended, but it is what it is. But that's the Saints free agent list. And uh, you can check it out on the State of the Saints podcast uh, Facebook page. You can go to Facebook.com, search State of the Saints podcast. I got it, got it posted. Let me know what you think about it. I just wish the season wasn't over, Who That Nation. I wish the season wasn't over, but it is what it is. And I guess we do have to move on. But, I mean, I'm still upset. I'm still frustrated. I, the Saints left so much to be desired. And uh, I just hope next year that they can possibly make a run because year after year, the window just starts to get lower and lower. And all of a sudden, one day, the window is going to be really closed. And right now, I'm going to be honest with you, it's not closed, but and you can kind of turn your head to the side and, you know, peek your eye out and you can, you know, and, and you can see a little bit. But at the end of the day, that window is slowly closing and we got to figure something out because these young players like the Ramchecks and the Kamaras and the Lattimores and the, and the Azalones and the, and the Marcus Williams of the world, like these guys are uh, going to need to get paid. And you can't fifth your, well, you can't fifth your option to guys, but at the end of the day, you know, these guys probably going to try to sit at home. I mean, this this is the new wave now. You know, if guys not happy, they want their contracts, they sit at the house. So hopefully the Saints can do something next season so I, I can get this bad taste out of my mouth that I've been having for the last three seasons. Hopefully they don't break our heart again. But right now it's just looking like the same old song and dance. But this has been the State of the Saints podcast. Yours truly, TJ Jones. Thank you for checking out the podcast. Follow the State of the Saints podcast on YouTube, youtube.com. Search State of the Saints podcast, facebook.com, search State of the Saints podcast, and previous episodes are available on Spotify. Till next time, all I got to say is, who that?